comes inside, the attitude you have, the kind of uh, energy you give. So uh, just a little bit about this. Uh, this is an amazing industry. It's one of the few places that I know that has both creative and technical disciplines which come together. Um, I look around this room and I see the future of video games. Behind all of us, um, we can all look to former students that have come from all walks of life and who have worked in a combination of over a billion of people hours to create artistic, mathematical, engaging works of mastery that not only entertain, but inspire, challenge, teach, and bring people together. But in order for any person in the industry uh, to make it, one must be adaptable, flexible, enduring, hardworking, and bold. The competition out there is fierce, and the hours will be very long. But each year, lucky individuals come out from the shadows of their cubicle walls and into the sunlight of critical and uh, consumer reception with finished products, and I gotta tell you firsthand, there is no better feeling, so look forward to that. Maybe none of that is something, it, maybe none of that is calling to you because something very unique and secret stirs deep within your being, and there's no way for me to know or predict what that is. Whatever the answer is, know that I came here today to tell you something extremely important. From this moment on, anything is possible. Just like you were constantly challenged by your teachers here at Five to come up with digital entertainment in the span of a few weeks or days, or maybe asked by them to formulate solutions to complex problems in just a short time, that same creative and technical power that you leverage to accomplish those tasks can be used in other ways. To literally influence the world around you and make identical, make it identical or close to your dreams as, uh, as, as you can. Well, how do I know this? Well, life for me has been something like a dream. I'm no video game legend, and I might even be questionably successful by the standards of others. But from my perspective, I know what the past, what I've seen in the past eight years of my career. What I've been able to accomplish so far has been a mixture of hard work, social investment, luck, timing, and a ridiculous amount of perseverance and belief in myself. Where have I been? Well, I started off like you, a student here at FIA. <laughs> It was a forging and tempering process for sure. There were many assignments and games to create, many assignments given and games to create, as well as a lot of improv to come up with, thanks to Ron. There were some great times, and through all the hard work and education, there was a very unique and worthwhile experience being made. I'm confident in saying that the experience here at FIA helped me in becoming the professional I am today, and I'm very fortunate to have attended this program. FIA challenged me and my cohort as it likely has challenged you. But, the, but past accomplishments of meeting those challenges was a bevy of lifelong rewards. I ended up coming out of FIA wiser, more experienced, and more fluid. Plus, coming out of FIA, I was able to handle standard work crunch like a machine. Being a work machine was enormously useful. When I started in my first job, I began by juggling the development of three games simultaneously for a modestly sized and ambitious local indie studio. That initial experience and rate of development was very time consuming, but the payout was significant in terms of the amount of titles I helped shift within those three years. When I was ready for new challenges, I was able to move on uh, extremely easily into the trenches of the most dominant sports game franchise in the history of games. That was quite the experience and vast in contrast compared to where I had come from before. After football, in the all-you-could-eat cereal bar of Maitland, <laughs> I moved away to a place of my choosing, an island a half a world away in which I was able to work remotely, making games for both the military and consumer segment while having the time of my life. My entire, my earlier work gave me the know-how on how to handle unforeseen challenges, even when working with a teammate who was 5,000 miles away. When I finally came back to the continental United States, it was on my employer, on my new employer's dime, and I ended up working for one of the most recognizable companies in the history, uh, sorry, in the history of mankind. So where am I now? Well, I'm living in the Bay Area, working for the number one hardware manufacturer of game consoles. As a development support engineer on the platform network support team, I literally help hundreds of developers make thousands of games, which reach millions worldwide. The best part about all of that is that no one can say different and that I'm still excited to see what may come next. But enough about me. 
I'm here to ask you today, what will be your story? How will your career turn out? I'm excited to find out with you. Will you be coming back to FIA one day to give a talk like me? Hopefully. I certainly couldn't have told you that I would be back here when I was a student here. Yet I believe then, as I do now, that anything is possible. Just like I believe the same for each one of you. No one knows exactly what the future will bring because it's full of surprises. But what I can share with you is one of the best things that I've heard in my career. The harder we work, the luckier we get. I'll repeat that and let it sink in for a moment. The harder we work, the luckier we get. It's a bit superstitious, I know, and I firmly believe it true. While luck plays a big factor on how well you do, luck can be influenced by the amount of work that you commit to and accomplish. At the start of your career, if you challenge yourself to keep up at the speed that your teachers have been putting you through here at FIA, you will be laying down an incredibly stable and solid foundation on the work, which a successful lifelong career can be built on. But in order to reach the extents of your dreams, you will need more than just hard work and being lucky. You will need to strategize and anticipate by heeding throughout your career what you decide is sound advice. I'm here to share with you today sound strategy, what sound strategy means to me, based off of almost eight years of being in the video games industry. So with that said, I want to give you my uh, strategies for success in the video games industry. Let's start with the first recommended strategy, protecting your online reputation. <clears throat> the age of the internet brought an almost infinite memory. Through the expansion of the internet came a burden of managing one's imprint on that space. So with that, it's important to recognize the need to protect one's online reputation. Every digital image now that taken may now exist in a perpetual state of accessibility if any of those images reaches an IP address. You could ask uh, Scarlett Johansson. Unfortunately, this means moments of embarrassment can live on forever. The active recruiter will use a search to discover things about you that you may not want shared. How is that a problem, you might say? I have nothing to hide. They better take me as I am. Well, the issue is the competition for those top spots are very fierce, and you wouldn't want that picture of you mooning the cops at last weekend's concert to be the first thing the recruiter sees after seeing the resume. So make certain to behave in the best way you can when you know that there's a chance for any paparazzi to be around. If your friends uh, like taking wild pictures of wild times, ask them to check twice with you before putting it online. They might tag your name and reputation in the shot, and if they don't, you want to still take care of what gets up there. This leads me to another uh, close suggestion on how to protect your online reputation. The separation of social circles. If your business is your livelihood, then what you share with people in your business can and unfortunately will be held against you. That means that if you started off only accepting all your new coworkers as friends on your Facebook, and then were caught posting pictures of your wild weekend ravage online, then chances are you may have now left the memory in the minds of the people who could influence a decision as to where you lie in that corporation or how quickly you rise. Sure, it's great to be friends with coworkers. That's part of the charm of working in this industry. We tend to like each other and we love to blow off steam together. But it's important to remember that every action has a reaction and that every reaction has a risk. Still, I believe it's better to play smart than not play at all. When you manage your social media, how about setting aside groups for people who shouldn't be seeing everything that you post? There are settings on most of the online social sites which let you categorize sets of people so that you may limit exposure you have to different types of friends as you make different types of friends in your life. This is useful when you want to keep some boundaries between you and the day-to-day -day or industry people. Maybe you're the same person in your day-to-day -day as you are with your industry. Maybe you're not, but now the choice is yours. Just be careful and remember that we aren't always in control of what we share. Someday it could be you getting tagged in the wrong public shot and there could go your chance of being taken seriously for that next position. My next suggested strategy is continue your education. Once you get to the workplace, you will be surrounded by so many opportunities to absorb from those around you. There will be veterans with tons of war stories to share and rookies with amazing passions in their hearts. You may be asked to take on something you've never known about, so the race is on and the clock is ticking. You now have to get familiar with new technology while still being 
under the expectation of a timely future delivery. So how does one mitigate this pressure? By constantly learning new things. When times are slow and when the pace is set, you may want to set yourself up with some continued learning. Some of the best places to learn are right from your email box. Sign up for free services like uh, at Stack Out Overflow or Khan Academy, Coursera, edX. There's Code School too, which is started here out of Orlando. And you'll get reminders and updates directly to your inbox. This is great, even if you don't do the work, you're getting exposed to that technology. On YouTube, there's a ton of channels which have only a sole purpose of uh, you know, giving out tutorials, which you can fill with your spare time. You can subscribe to these and try them out at your own schedule. Even on LinkedIn, which is the king of professional networks, there are groups which you can join into, which have continual forum discussions, educating all of your subscribers. Essentially, there's no reason why you, your intake of educational information has to stop when you leave bio. So try not to let you. So if you're learning at work, doing what you do, and you think that's enough to stay highly competitive, I want to tell you something. You'll have to think again. The people competing against you are eating cereal with the Kindle in hand, driving to work with technology, technolo technical audiobooks playing from their car radios, and are spending at least one night per week at some meetup with people who want to share and discuss technology of their field. So stay competitive. We'll touch on that some more a little bit later. So we're on to the next strategy, and I want to ask you guys if you uh, ever watched Office Space. And remember that scene where the main character is giving the feedback to the internal investigators? He talks about how he has five bosses and they're always around. So not only one boss is wandering around, but he has his boss's boss and their boss's boss too. This is what I call the multi-boss hiring. And this is what my next success strategy is about. Just remember that in some companies, if you don't move fast enough, you, may be one, you might have one of these boss's bosses coming to you and telling you to stay over time for the weekend. But you know what? That's OK. Sure, we should be careful and respect uh, the corporate hierarchy, but I think your boss, but I think when your boss's boss is coming around, or what I like to call super bosses, this is a strategic career focused masterminds opportunity to shine. When that super boss is around, this is a fantastic opportunity to take you know, your career by the horns. Put your best foot forward and demonstrate your worth. If both your boss and your super boss are around, you now have an opportunity to not only impress the person who writes your reviews, but also to depress the person who writes your boss's reviews. You showing well equates to your boss showing well. All it takes is a few good displays from in front of these super bosses, and they will come to know you by name and know who their subordinates uh, superstars are. You. The next strategy I have to talk about is the sharing the accolades when success hits you. As you go about in your career, remember that there are moments when it's wise to remind everyone cheering you on in the room that your success could not have been reached without the support and efforts of others. Remember to always share the stage with your supporting cast. So with that, I'll take this moment to say thanks to the following people. My uh, previous faculty members, and Courtney Lewis, of course. And uh, all my former co cohort two classmates, wherever they are. Thank you very much for helping me get here. And it's as simple as that. So be humble and tip your hat when you're in the spotlight. It will allow you to de demonstrate appreciation and maturity. This will help build bonds with those you work with. At the end of the day, there are many who may hog the spotlight and keep all the accolades, while hundreds of others work tirelessly behind them. Trust me, you don't want to be one of those persons who neglects to share the success. True leaders lift up those around them. So at the end of the day, while the industry is a competitive place, it's not about making your name a marketing soundbite or getting a specific position at any cost. It's about building uh, trust and camaraderie within the teams that you're part of. This leads to people recalling fondly of having worked with you because you were respectable enough to remind others that almost no job in the industry can be done alone. The next strategy is about problem solving, or what I like to call marrying a solution, which is not good. When you're given a task by your supervisor, there might be a big part of you 
that becomes inspired to come up with some grand package of a solution. You may work extra hard uh, because you want the solution to be flexible and flexible and <coughs> hold up to any unforeseen circumstance. Being ambitious is definitely a merit, but sometimes problem solving leads to getting married to a solution. What this means is that there are times when we might get committed to solving a solution through one specific path, and it might turn out that that certain path was not the best one to pick with. It could be that there was a better way. The importance is knowing that ultimately what your supervisor really wants isn't how we detail the solution, but about how you solve the problem. Therefore, stubbornly trying to work through something that has grown out of control is something of a risk. Sound strategists must mitigate <coughs> risks. So here's how to identify if you're married to a solution uh, instead of solving the problem. You're frequently missing deadlines. Missing one of your deadlines for a multitude of reasons uh, can happen for a multitude of reasons. But missing more than one is a visible pattern and could indicate that you're married to a harder than originally thought path. If you catch this early enough, you might be able to rethink the problem and create an alternative solution with the knowledge you have gained from the initial attempt. Here's another one. You seem to be reinventing the wheel. As you start assembling the solution, it might become evident that you're spending a lot of time solving subcomponents of a problem which appear eerily familiar. This may be an indication that you could uh, be opted towards using, sorry, this may have been an indication that you could have opted to using a shared solution from the starting point instead of having spent all this time reinventing the wheel. Besides saving a time sink, another advantage of using common and shared libraries or templates is that you could gain confidence in knowing that the technology you are incorporating has been evaluated, assessed, and put under scrutiny of others, that it's held up to prior work. So understand the problem well enough so that your solution doesn't replicate work already solved by others who have technology they're willing to share. A final indicator that you might be married to a solution, you create spaghetti and uh, wire knots. What I mean here is that you may notice that you are working your task. Uh, you, what I mean here is that you are you may notice as you're working through your task that it's difficult to move around with what you've done. You may often lose track or make mistakes because of all the wires and crisscross connections that exist throughout your work. If you're having difficulties keeping up to manage the solution, then imagine how it would feel like for some, if someone were to have to take it over from you, or if later one day you had to come back to look at it. Could they carry on with your work? Could you? My suggestion on how to handle this is when you become aware that you've created a pretzel, is to assess whether uh, creating a clean version from scratch without if you could do that without bumping um, the deadline out too much. Maybe you could do that with the new information you gained from the first attempt, and you could recreate another version of the solution that is leaner and easier to work with and digest, not only for you in the future, but from somebody who takes over your work. If so, then I consider that a sound investment of your time. Now let's talk about the strategy of collective connections. There is a very very big power in networking. Why? Because each person that you meet may easily become a catalyst into a future opportunity. The talent is knowing how to connect with people and how to create and leverage sound relationships. This may not come to you naturally if you spent a lot of time keeping to yourself or two small circles, but it's a skill, and just like any skill, it can be developed. You will find out as you graduate that there is a network of individuals in our industry, large and wide. But as the LinkedIn uh, social graph will show you, the degree of separation between you and someone else in the industry might just be as small as two people. That means that if you don't know someone, you likely know someone who knows a person that you just met at GDC. Connecting the dots and being reachable is a sound strategy for success. Why? Because at the end of the day, the people who vouch for you will not only take you to new heights, but will also connect you with individuals who have spent time acquiring their own levels of success. So be, be prepared to break the ice and ask a stranger what they do. Be present. Show complete interest in what they say. And then see where the, your stories converge so that you can build bridges. Round it up with an invitation to connect online. If that inv invitation comes your way first, then think twice before rejecting or ignoring it. Every contact is an opportunity. So instead of turning away an invite on a social network, you could do as we discussed earlier and place them within a professional social circle. Sure, it might take more time to initially set up, but you won't be snubbing the person who 
may later one day be a valuable resource. Same for your coworkers, peers, and classmates. You and them may spend a ridiculous amount of time together. But that's not always going to be the case. As you disperse from each other, or as people leave the company that you are working in, be sure to send them off a warm goodbye email that includes your contact information and a way to stay in touch with you. This will not only be a nice gesture and a show of appreciation to them that you were able, you were be able to work together, but also places a link between you and wherever it is that they might go off to. Even for less, per even for less personal scenarios, such as conventions and industry events, come prepared with business cards. Regardless if the company has issued to you, issued them to you or not, I made my own business cards when I went off to GDC to look for work. Having a business card presenting it to somebody is a good strategy in how to get a business card in return. Once you have that card, this can segue into creating an online connection. At the end of the event, keep all the cards with you, and then the following week, with some nice, write some nice emails reminding those people how you met, showing appreciation that you were able to meet them, and again, inviting them, uh, extending an invitation for them to stay in touch. One tip I have is I usually write on the back of the business cards I get small notes of how I met those people so that I have those details in hand for when I write those emails. As your network grows, you will be able to see that in your, from your network who's rising to the top, who's staying stagnant, and who's heading towards an exit. You'll be exposed to your contacts' peers and you will be able to stay in the loop about exciting opportunities down the line. And all that comes from collecting connections. The next strategy I recommend is employing uh, is something that you might already already do, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of you do this, which is consume news daily. Whatever you know yesterday is old news today. That's why it's pivotal for you to stay connected to industry news. These days, information travels so quickly. Tomorrow, it'll be coming <coughs> to us at lightning speeds through technology such as online watches and AR glasses and other kinds of techno stuff. But there's a huge uh, deluge of data out there, so you need to be careful. Try to be uh, savvy in how you pick which bundlers bring you trustworthy news as it happens. Sure, some might wonder why it's important to stay consuming news daily. Some might say, if it's big enough news, it'll get to me eventually. However, when you're in a meeting or a conference room and amongst your peers at work, if you're the person who has absolutely nothing to say, on a topic or is always the last person to find out about something, then you are putting yourself at risk. Why? Because teams like contributors. Humans appreciate interesting people who share fascinating tidbits about what's going on in the world around them. So aim to be one of them. So I recommend staying connected to the news of our industry. Doing so, you may likely see patterns emerging with regards to trends and shifts in the industry. You may start being able to see warning signs and red flags about the industry before it happens. This will hone your ability to make uh, connections between events that seem happening in repetition from prior cycles. And an exchange may help you uh, be more quick in preparing and adjusting your career, financial choices, or other as a response. Here are three of my favorite news sites, Blues News, Hard OCP, and Gama Sutra. So now we're coming to the end of my list. But uh, this is still an important strategy, and this strategy in particular will make you the most amount of money if you listen carefully. Be ready for the call. While every opportunity that has working on technology that you find interesting and fascinating is a blessing and a gift, it could be that your experience is building you into a more sought after resource. Loyalty is honorable, but the times when a working for a company your whole life is moving far beyond, behind us. Just take this small fact into account. The average company gives 3% raise per year. Inflation rates across the, state, the country are a lot higher than that. <laughs> On the other hand, a professional can see gains as high as 40% by jumping ship and changing jobs. The key factor through knowing uh, about that, though, is knowing when to do it and who to do it for, and also how to be your best when you get the call. The call is when an interested third party reaches out uh, to you about applying directly to their company about a job that they have open that you could fill. Here are some strategies on how to be ready when that call comes. Log in every day. 
One way to be ready for that call is to know how to speak well about what you do. As you start your careers, remember that there will be a massive amount of work thrown your way and if your job is if your job's worth it to the company. That means in a given month, you may do more than 100 different tasks. In established companies, you can easily look at the project management software to see what it is you did. However, you won't always have access to that database. And making printouts or copies to the contents of that database may be against your company's policies and rules. A strategic choice then would be to keep your own log about what you've done in your workday and keep track of the types of challenges you have overcome in your day. What problems did you address? Which problems did you resolve? How did you find interesting and unique solutions to difficult circumstances? What technologies did you lose, uh, use or learn to use so that you were able to complete the job? How many hours did it take you to complete the job and who did you work with on completing that task? Having this information ready will uh, give you a reference for discussion from which to share. Not only for an interested recruiter that's uh, now ready to speak with you, but maybe even for an inquiring boss who wants to share with who wants you to share with them what you've been up to these past few weeks. Help yourself by keeping track via a log. That daily investment will definitely pay off in the long way. Here's another tip. Keep up with new skills. As you work, you will be building up uh, experience in making video games. There will be assigned tasks given to you, which may stray you away from technologies that you've learned here at FIA. There might be a request for you to do something in a separate but similar technology, like <coughs> going from Maya to Max. Or maybe it could be a whole new form of tech, like going from C++ to AngularJS. When the call comes in, you will want to show that you've been keeping up with your new skills. What are some great, uh, what are some great ways to do this that don't take too much time away from your very limited time? Well, as discussed before, there are discussion forums where there's a whole bunch of talks about technology. There are these schools that provide courses for uh, small fees or sometimes free. There are university programs that give you access to classes where all you have to do is register and you can participate during your off hours. There are audio and electronic books that center around time-bound and focused learning, which you could dive into over lunches, between your work hours, or on a commute to work. The important part is remembering how to keep educating yourself. It will be tough through heavy workloads, but, there, but, more, but the more you understand about technologies that our industry uses outside of your current position, the more flexible and robust and interesting part of the CUS. And that's a sound strategy. To be ready to, for the call, um, it is important to know the companies that you want to work for beforehand. As your career blossoms and your experience becomes uh, in demand, you may get calls from recruiters from other parts of the country or from other countries altogether. Being up to date uh, with which companies matter most to you is very important. Doing perpetual research through uh, your free time can reward you with insights on a company's culture and whether that company is calling, uh, whether the company that's calling you is one that you will want to begin with dialogue with. From what you learn from your sources, you will be better uh, educated on whether it's time to respond to that call, take the application, or save it for a later date. Ways to stay up to date on companies has been discussed before in consuming news daily, but the more you could do. Uh, but there's more than you could do to keep posted on about a company's press releases. LinkedIn contacts at a company is a great method to be able to, to see how turnover is at a company. As you create and retain connections via LinkedIn, you can stay posted uh, about these contacts at these companies to see where they're at. With sharp eyes, you will notice patterns through posted updates about how long a, people have, a person has stayed in a particular position or how quickly they've been promoted within that company. That may clue you in that an opportunity at this company that is calling you is not one to pass up. Other sources of information uh, about companies come from financials themselves. Has a very large budgeted game done well for a development studio or publisher? You have the power to find out through uh, MPD news reports or even see direct buy-in statistics through sites like VG Charts, which I all recommend you get familiar with. Lastly, one of the best ways to stay current on which company you may want to work for the most is by remaining a gamer. As the days go by and the months turn into years, you may gradually shift and sway away from the amount of gaming you did prior to the start of your career. But checking out titles is important in knowing who's producing quality entertainment. Another potential benefit uh, is 
discovering who has game technology that captures your attention, preference, and imagination. In playing a game, you may see an area for improvement for that game. Now, when the call comes in, you'll be uh, ready to discuss that hypothetical improvement and how you are excited to be a part of that implementation on the developer's next go at the game. Just remember to be careful how you criticize, because all of us know here as developers, developers who pour in their time and passion into their work have you know a soft spot for their babies. Just know that the recruiters won't be speaking to you if they weren't looking to bring in new talent. And new talent with well thought out forged ideas from fan based experiences is always going to be sought after a lot more than new talent without gameplay experience. Some companies, such as Riot, won't even speak to you unless you play the, their game. Rumor has it that their QA department won't even hire you unless you have a certain global score. <laughs> I probably couldn't get a job there. So be ready for the call. Keep your resumes and portfolios updated. Your resumes may be stale as you stay long in one company. Don't let that happen because your resumes and portfolios are keys into new opportunities. When you receive the call from the company that you've wanted to speak with for years, improve your chances by not making them wait for you to create or update a new resume. That sounds strategy. If you followed my first tip about logging activity daily, with all the daily logs you've been keeping, it shouldn't be too hard to summarize the latest work on your resume. Knowing that you have your resume in your back pocket will have you speaking more confidently and will demonstrate to those who engage with you that you are a pre prepared individual. And that's impressive. The last strategy I recommend is a strategy which will come easier for you if you follow all the prior eight before it. The last strategy is stay one. Even if you don't get the call, you should do your best to stay one. A lot of this presentation is just about that. Being wanted means you are sought after. You are a god. You are worth requesting. And when you're wanted, you have options. That gives you the power to make choices instead of dealing with single solutions or scenarios. <clears throat> when you are gainfully employed and happy, this is when you'll be most desired. The concept is similar to romantic relationships, where it's more likely to be desired when you're with someone than when you're on your own. Why is that? I think it's human psychology. People get reassurances you are worth their time by knowing others have committed to pay you for your time or to be with you in case of the romantic relationships. So leverage this human element and strategize to stay warned, even if you currently have something good in your hands. Here's some strategies on what you could do to increase your desirability. Keep positive and be high energy. Throughout the challenges of work and the stress of late crunches, do your best to keep yourself positive and stay high energy. There are choices you have to take, sorry, these are choices you have to take for yourself about how you act, how you treat others, and how you treat yourself. If you think it's fake or disingenuous to be in good spirits through tough times, even if you aren't feeling like your best, think again. It's sound strategy. I believe each person prefers to be happy, and people around us prefer to be with happy people, especially coworkers and peers. So do what you can to get yourself away from anything that brings you down. Most of what makes up our emotional state has to do with our environment, our intake, and what we choose to do with our time. So strategize to stay positive. It will really will help you in your career. Also protect your energy. Try not to fall behind in work. This contributes to stress, and stress contributes, contributes to negative attitudes. Seek a stable work-life balance. We can all easily get submerged into the culture and labor of our industry because we love it. But it's important to have outlets to give yourself time to recharge. Find hobbies that give you a break, that are rewarding, fulfilling, and hopefully healthy. Socialize with people who aren't in this industry sometimes. Travel. See the world where you can. You only have one life, so make certain that you are well-rounded in your experiences. This in turn will make you a happier person, and that in turn will make you a better worker. The best way to stay wanted, though, is to do well at work. <laughs> Doing great at work is the best way to stay wanted. Someone who is a contributor that carries themselves as one is going to go a long way. When you meet objectives on time, show ambition, and constantly meet challenges, you are determining, demonstrating not only to the company you work for, but to the whole world around you that you're a capable individual. 
show reliability by always coming through with your assignments or tasks. If for some reason you're unable to meet those tasks or assignments, give your team members enough heads up that you are behind. It's okay. It happens to all of us. We're there for each other, so we just want to know. When that happens, though, try to always follow up by analyzing the reasons why you weren't able to meet the demand and see if, it, if there's a way that you can plan on how to avoid that in the future with some better strategy. Also show flexibility by accepting challenges outside of your area of expertise. This means that a company can count on you to wear many hats. Companies love masters of many trades. Being one saves them overhead and gives you an opportunity to have many avenues for growth. Even if you have to set down your expert hat for a little bit um, to take on something more novice or immediate, remember that your knowledge uh, learned in those expert areas will easily be probably transferred in implicitly to whatever it is you're taking on now. The best advice I could give you is what my mentor gave me from PlayStation. Look for opportunities where you might be helpful, even if no one's asked you for help. It'll be valued regardless. Being proactive about how you fix other people's problems will keep people appreciating you. When that happens, word spreads and companies come calling. Lastly, keep visible. Be proud of your accomplishments. Post on your social networks the information which you've, you're allowed to share about what you've done, how you've succeeded, to any degree. Showcase your talent on personal websites and celebrate with others the victory of launching a title or even just getting a new job. If you manage to complete, uh, complete post-grad education, let others know about the completion of those courses. Add these courses and new credentials to your LinkedIn profile and your resume, and it'll show active and they'll stay visible. Staying visible means you are remaining in view of those who can help you get into new heights. Trust me, someone is always watching. And there you have it, nine strategies which I highly recommend following. These will increase your soft skills and will help you get to the top of your professional game. These all came from personal experiences which I will gladly share with any of you. So feel free to reach out to me on my way out or through LinkedIn. Actually, I want each one of you to actually send me an invite to my LinkedIn. My LinkedIn is here on the screen and I'll give it to you in person. I look forward to hearing how these uh, strategies help you in the coming years. So go out there and continue to work hard, persevere through obstacles, and know that you are part of a network of alumni and faculty who are rooting for your success. Ultimately though, the way you reach it is dependent on you and how you decide to strategize. Thank you for having me here. After this talk, I will briefly go over the internship program at PlayStation, take some Q&A, and raffle away some prizes. Before that, though, anybody interested in seeing my uh, cohort two presentation from Ron? Yes. Yes. Let me uh, show you some very things, but not too bad. So originally, when I started here, I thought I was going to be a, a technical artist, and I would attend uh, Brian's classes and learn Maya. That all went for well for about I don't know four weeks, and then Tom, Tom's class actually uh, beat me into submission a little. Duplicate this. All right, so the task, I don't know, you guys still use Panda 3D? Nope. No? All right, so Panda 3D was a Python-based game engine that Ron used uh, in his classes, and he gave the assignment, uh, said, hey, manipulate joints programmatically. For me, I wanted to kind of take it to another level. I, was, I thought I'd be a technical artist, so I decided to tackle, uh, at, you know, kind of uh, constructing my own 3D model, skeletal, rigging it, and uh, making it do this in uh, Panda 3D. Okay. Thank you. 
So you guys uh, met Anita Stokes. She's there, and that's the rest of her team. Uh, if you guys are thinking about applying for an internship, I would definitely uh, at least know two of those names. The more familiar you are to them, the more likely you'll be in the internship program. So uh, this is just coverage for their standard uh, presentation. Not going to go exactly that way. So from what you guys know about Sony, we, we cover a lot of areas. We have a, a parent company that's based out of Japan. And um, at Sony Computer Entertainment of America, the headquarters is in the San Mateo area, which is just 20 miles south of San Francisco. We have uh, different divisions. Um, and we're all over the world. Uh, our company is divided in three regions, uh, SCEA, SCEE, and SEJ, and so it's geographically set up that way. Um, as a PlayStation uh, network support engineer, I service all the licensees for SEA areas. So sometimes I get support issues from South America, um, Canada for sure. I don't think I get any from Greenland. But, so. <laughs> um, so our location's in San Mateo. And there we actually do build games. Uh, we have uh, another division called Worldwide Studios, which is responsible for making first party titles. So we have different departments, and we actually take internships, uh, people, interns for these different departments. So if you know anybody who uh, is in finance or legal or marketing and sales, and maybe wants to try out strategic business development, let them know that we're uh, interested in talking with them. This is the picture of our headquarters building. It's a three building complex. It's really awesome. It's constantly growing. Um, and if you come to San Mateo, let me know. I'll give you a tour. This is our cafe. I mean, there are a lot. There's also a gym. I'm not in there as much as I would. <laughs> <laughs> so we have some media labs. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> and uh, so now moving on to San Diego, we have San Diego office that does worldwide studio games. Their biggest uh, game is uh, you know, Major League Baseball. So here's an interesting thing. They have the second largest mocap stage in North America. So if any of you guys are really interested in uh, mocap technologies, uh, I know that they're looking for people. And we have internship opportunities for that. I have not been in that room, but I really want to. So, moving on. Um, actually, there's a picture of the mocap st stage. <laughs> so, Santa Monica has made some of the games that we all love to play. They're still working on some new titles. Uh, but they've actually been split off and now have moved to Playa Vista. Naughty Dog remains in Los Angeles area and uh, is still making kick ass technology. There are other locations as well, uh, including Ben, Bellevue, Liso Viejo, and Toronto. Um, we've talked a little bit about Ben, but we can't talk about what they're doing. But I got to tell you that if you get an opportunity to see it, you will be interested, probably. 90% chance. Um, here's some upcoming titles. Actually, we released bottom left one already. Top right one, too. Little Big Planet 3, I think, is coming soon. Just a show of hands, who, who owns a PlayStation 4 here? Okay. Who owns a PlayStation 3? All right. Who owns an Xbox One? Oh, you're not getting any. <laughs> <laughs> so, why PlayStation? Well, we do have cutting edge technology, state of the art facilities. There's no dress code. That's a lie. 
I saw somebody get turned away. They were wearing some scandalous stuff. <laughs> we have a rich legacy of games. There's varied work, like I showed you guys about the business side. I, most of my friends are in the business groups. And there's training and development opportunities. That, that's true. I get, um, I get all kinds of uh, business development classes, uh, which I take for, for like crucial conversations. If you guys get a chance to read that book, highly recommend it. Um, it's, it's one that like Ben Moll would recommend to you. Okay, it's good stuff. So the internship program is, is, is not free. You're not going to be poor. It's actually paid. Um, it's housing's provided. It's not bad either because housing in San Mateo is actually pretty damn expensive. Um, I had a friend of mine who would ride his bike just two miles away. Um, loved it. Post pictures on his Facebook all the time. He brought his bike to work. The internships run for about 12 weeks, and uh, they're also available in these other locations. Um, we accept recent grads, and we accept graduates that have graduated within the last year. So the types of internships that we have available are varied and wide. Everybody in this room can get an internship at Sony PlayStation. So lastly, just to know that there's reasons why you want to get an internship there. It's going to give you some great real world experience. It's definitely get your foot in the door and get you exposed to how we do things and uh, you know get people to know your name. At the very end of your uh, internship opportunity, um, you will have a final presentation that will be in front of the executive board of Sony. This is like Sean Layden and stuff. There's special events and perks like nights out uh, once per week and uh, you know, kind of team building exercises. And you'll get a coach, a mentor, who will give you guidance to go out your internship. So I noticed that there wasn't enough internship packets available before for everybody in the room. But if you go to this web address, it's going to tell you everything that's there. One of the things that you'll want to do is make sure that you have a good cover letter. I have some tips about cover letters. Remember, cover letters kind of should be enough information that follows up your resume. Resume should get somebody interested in you. Slightly note, like knowing what you've done, where you come from. But the cover letter should be specific to the opportunity, shortly telling those people why you should, you're the best person for that job. So the next uh, internship opportunities are coming out in summer, and the openings will be posted in December of this year. So keep posted on the website. The decisions are made by mid-April, and you'll know by May whether you'll be getting a, uh, you know, internship opportunity. So that's it. If you have any questions, uh, internships at PlayStation.com. Pretty simple. All right, guys, that's all my time. So before you guys all stand up and stuff, who wants free shit? Right. I'm going to give out the best free shit first. The way I'm going to do this, though, is I don't have a, like anything. So there's one back row, and then two, three, four, five. You guys should sit in one of the seats. So one, two, three, four, five. Five rows, 17 across. I don't know how much that back row. But let's do the back row first. We'll do it to 20. So 19. So can you count? Just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. It was less than 12. So never mind. Try that again. <laughs> six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Guy with the finger in nose. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All right, come over here. Don't watch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what again? Major League Baseball. <laughs> Okay, next row down. Actually, this one I'm going to pick a row between one and five. Two, so the second row down. Now that there's 17 chairs. Two. Second row down. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 sorry, sorry. I did the back row. I meant from this set. I'm so sorry. It's actually you. 
for the classes. Oh, yeah. No, 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 Thirteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. You with the gray sweater. No, nope, not you. You.